Hello, we are in Pomponia Ranch. This is Philippe Benoit DVM and we have Basimodo co-starring on this episode on the neck and the back. So today we are talking about the examination of the neck co-starring Basimodo and we are going to see that the conformation of the neck in regard to the physical exam should take into account the head, the upper neck and the lower neck. All this part of the body of the horse is also interesting to evaluate within the shape, the muscling, and also the wall conformation and angulation. This horse has a very kind of neutral positioning of his, of his neck, which is basically 90 degrees angulation with the head. But you know that the vertebrae body axis is going to follow the neck and go down with two angulations and curve starting from C1, C2, which have a different type of angulation and authorize the horse to do the yes movement up to 80% of that range of motion is coming from these two vertebrae. When the lower vertebrae bodies authorize the horse to do mostly some lateral flexion and some up and down movement as well, especially for the lower part of the neck at the level of C6, C7. Part of the observation is to evaluate the muscle shape of each segment knowing that most of this muscle attach very far up on the neck. You do have some tiny muscle which allow different movements, but you have to remember that basically the splenius muscle is more superficial there. We do have the brachiocephalicus muscle and the sternocephalicus muscle. This muscle may show some areas of amyotrophy, and that's why you also look at what could be underneath going on on the horse. You want to have a nice symmetry of this muscle when you go from the left to the side of the horse. So that's why I do recommend to go sideways to have a view approximately 45 degrees to see if I can see any abnormal shape, curve or concavity which would be suspicious of a potential amyotrophy. Then I will move forward the horse and check the base of the chest the base of the sternophilicus, brachiocephalicus muscle and see if anything looks suspicious as well on this attachment, any growth or concavity which could be related either to neck or low shoulder or pectoral muscle insertion, amyotrophy or asymmetry. When it comes to palpation, we cannot ignore that the horse does have some potential issues with teeth or TMJ joints and if any of this may occur, they may affect some of the pole and low neck motion. So once this has been examined and evaluated as well, we can go on with the pole and the lower neck evaluation. When I palpate the neck, I do start with the pole, I squeeze gently the upper muscles which involve the rectus capitis on the side, the dorsal aspect of the north dorsal ligament, nuchal ligament insertion on the occiput, and I go down and palpate all the muscle on the top line and the lower line, especially if I have felt any source of amyotrophy before in my evaluation of the neck by observation. Now, if I go from the pole down, and I squeeze again this part, I go at the level here of C1, C2, I go and evaluate with my palm of my hand and squeeze every facet joint as I go down and see if there's any source of pain as the horse does get my hand in pressure on every joint all the way down to the subclavius muscle which is the limit of C7, T1 joint at the beginning of the thorax. Now, if I want to evaluate also the motion of this head, I can move sideways and get the yes, no movement of the horse, knowing that the upper vertebrae are responsible of most of this movement in axial rotation and flexion and then we can do some stretch sideways by using your palm of your hand and see if every segment accepts the movement all the way to the left or to the right as you go both directions. If the horse is a bit resistant like today you can use some cookies or sugar and see how much of a stretch you're gonna get. Thank you for watching. For more information and videos, please visit sonosite.com backslash vidhead.